Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for joining us. Um, Good afternoon. So, uh, is there a limit to this law? Meaning, will uh, you know the smallest sari sari store be able to benefit from this? Oh yes, definitely. It will uh, open up access to finance mm -hmm. uh, by anyone who's really uh, availing of microfinancing or who is uh, who are in need of microfinancing. So definitely, this will be a, a big help to the, to that particular sector. As you, as you know, many uh, poor uh, and micro entrepreneurs are usually and more often than not uh, would be needing additional yeah. financing to run their business on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why they take uh, advantage and sometimes avail of those uh, uh, non-formal or informal loans, informal <laughs> loans informal loan that options. are normally characterized as 5-6 mm -hmm. no? uh, because it is an easier access, doesn't require uh, collaterals, so a lot of uh, uh, greater accessibility uh, are taking place by using those kinds of loans. Now with this, with this new act definitely it will encourage more uh, microfinancing to this sector with reasonable rates. I understand they are sort of limiting it to around 2 to 2.5 percent uh, per of month interest of rates. interest rates no, per month uh, versus uh, the 5-6 which would probably lead They're to about 20 percent uh, per month or sometimes per week. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a big savings on the part of small businessmen, especially the micro entrepreneurs. No, I mean, it seems to be there are many segments of the SME industry. There's the there's a micro, there's the SME yes. industry. How do you bridge the gap between the micro and SME? Because then the access to financing becomes a different story altogether once you get to the S and the M and the mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. So, so what's really important for micro to graduate to small and then to mm -hmm. medium, aside from financing, you'll have to back them up also with all these trainings, uh, like what we do in Go Negosho, mm -hmm. uh, change in mindset, uh, entrepreneurial know-how, mm -hmm. how to really uh, develop a very good and working business model that will really level up your current business and uh, take them to the next uh, level so that so uh, it becomes professionalize their operations. Professionalize uh, training mm -hmm. and financial literacy, technology transfer, yeah. technology transfer con uh, introduce more innovation in their business model so that uh, financing is part of the picture, but it's not uh, all there is to it now so really have to back them up with competency building capacity building that's important for the, the so that the micro becomes small small becomes medium etc so they can graduate mm -hmm. progressively that's right that's okay right. um we do have a credit gap here according to the adb it's about close to uh, sixty thousand dollars per enterprise do you have any ideas how we can bridge this with this new law in place Oh, definitely uh, the new law will encourage more uh, financial flow into this system. Uh, it will encourage more micro uh, finance NGOs uh, to be providing this needed uh, uh, financing to the, to the micro entrepreneurs. Without this, um, although we recognize that there are already a lot of microfinance institutions, yes. but this law will definitely encourage more uh, providers, more financial financing providers. Uh, to enter into the picture and help the micro sector. For those interesting, interested in becoming lenders, um, is that even possible to break into this new? I mean, it's also a business opportunity. I, 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 yes, it is. Yeah. A, it's a big market out mm -hmm. there. We're talking of what over nine hundred thousand micro entrepreneurs, close to a million, mm -hmm. who would be needing this financing. Uh, uh, this financing. And uh, there are only, I think, about 200 microfinance institutions. There's, there's still a lot of room, a big demand out there, a lot of room. And we understand that uh, based on studies, uh, the microfinance uh, lenders do earn a reasonable you know, mm -hmm. return on capital. Yeah. Ramon, on a broader basis, when you look at the uh, contribution to GDP of these SMEs, it's actually you looking at 99.6% yes, of yes. the org organizations are SMEs, but they only contribute a third of GDP. That's right. Apart from credit, what other things concretely can the administration do right now? Oh, actually, the, the, the earlier act, the Go Negotio mm -hmm. Act, uh, also initiated by Senator Bamakino, mm -hmm. is one that will really, uh, I guess, level up this kind of entrepreneurs, the micro, uh, th th that's the missing link actually, access to financing, access to market, uh, access to mentors like Go Negosho and other associations. So every everybody, all the different sectors should be helping out 
all the micro, especially, and, and the small, mm -hmm. who would be needing all these kinds of help to, to really uh, bring their, le their business to the next level. And you've got some upside with the APEC SME Summit coming up next APEC week. SME will be a help, although a lot of people are quite uh, you know, afraid of what will happen with the, with the APEC. With, but but uh, actually, the, the reality here is that as we talk, a lot of our products are already liberalized. In other mm -hmm. words, uh, about 96% have almost uh, 0 to 5% tariff rates. So uh, now and, we're and just catching we're, up in we're, terms We're used to competition yeah. from imports, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, the greater competition right now is happening among all the local players. It's a tough market out there. Mm -hmm. e even if you talk of uh, industry players, mm -hmm. your, your local competitors, the local ones, they're, they're a harsher competitor, fiercer competitor. Well, there's your source to the problem of exports. Then, yeah. <laughs> oh. We've been yeah. trying to figure out the problem of exports, and uh, this might just be... It. Yeah, yeah, the problem of export, uh, 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 but that, that's another yeah. topic, but I think that that has something to do with uh, making exporters really competitive as well. Uh, really finding out what the market, uh, how can we be uh, competitive versus the other mm -hmm. export providers uh, in other countries, what will make us different, what will make our product and services really different and have that competitive edge. So it's a whole slew of, uh, I guess, uh, com competency build-up, yeah. yeah, similar to what we're talking about, the micro, mm -hmm. uh, really building up the, the, the the, a big differentiator for all our exporters. Normally, export would really uh, be successful if you really have that comparative advantage in supplying that product. For example, the dried mangoes uh, yeah. of one of our partners, those from coming from Cebu, mm -hmm. the, the pro food type, Mr. Justin Uy, would be having dried mangoes, and it's the, the best dried mangoes, for example, only from the Philippines. Yeah. So because we have that comparative advantage in mangoes in the, in, from coming from the Philippines. So you will have to look at products that where Philippines would have a comparative advantage so that to, to, to really make it big in the export market. Okay, thank you very much again you. for joining us, sir.